Today's video is going to be basically about my fly setup where I do my work. Um, it's going to have my bench, my tools, materials. I'm going to kind of walk you guys through what I've learned over 35 years of what I like my setup. This desk is a roll top desk that belonged to my father when I was a little kid. I learned to tie on this thing. And when I became an adult and got my own place, dad gave it to me. So it's pretty awesome. I've got to tie on this thing for a little over 35 years. Um, 37, I think, is how long I've been actually tying. So on my bench, I use a traveling rotary vise. And this thing's pretty nice. I'm going to move it where you can see it on the camera a little bit. It'll actually rotate over. Pretty common. Um, I've tied on standard old double a vices forever i got this just a few years ago it is a midline vice it's not the best and it's not the worst but i love what it does it's all the vice you need um, on my vice i keep a material spring this is so when you're throwing different materials you can lock it in place it's kind of handy i have this here so when i'm tying something i have multiple things going on it'll be able to hang your bobbin over out of the way it's pretty awesome it moves when you loosen it up it does anyhow it moves out of the way works pretty good um i like to have a light on top of my vice i do have lighting in my room of course but i like to have a direct light where i can see um the older i get the less my eyes decide they want to work so this really helps me out i've got a hackle gauge it will let me size up what size hooks in hackle i like this even if you're buying hackle that is a set size they're not always right so this is good to have for consistency to get the right size flies all the time i cut a piece of scrap foam i keep it on the bottom so when i'm tying a bunch of flies if i need to head cement to dry or something like that i i keep them to where i can put all the flies around there i have a cutting mat this is a two-fold deal one is i use a rotary cutter for cutting foam sometimes and two if i want to cut flies or cut material to make flies and I'm making like a streamer of a certain length or anything like this this gives me a measuring device and if it's longer than that just double it up to the math in your head but you're not having to measure things you can get things really consistent I have a whip finisher I made this myself that is actually just some spring steel that I took and then I spun a handle on my lathe I like doing woodwork my bodkin needle is just a typical one, but I took and got a piece of wood, drilled a hole in it, and I filled it full of a Brillo pad. I cut a piece of Brillo pad up, and when you get this thing dirty, you can just kind of dip it in and out of there, and it keeps it clean all the time, so you don't want to scrape it off later. Head cement. I use hard as nails fingernail polish for head cement, but I like this little container. Inside this container, it has a little drip system that catches all the drips, and then it has the needle that I can actually apply a lot nicer than a brush. I still use the brush for different things, but I, I like this. Um, I have my dubbing containers. I make a lot of my own dubbing. I'm actually gonna do a video tomorrow on that, but I have all of my dubbing in containers, even the ones I make myself, I drill holes in them to where I can pull them out. Um, got my UV dubbing. I'm really a huge fan of UV. I think it really, really affects things. As far as dubbing, you can buy fancy dubbing brushes and stuff like that. I bought a gun cleaning brush I like a little metal gun cleaning brush make sure and get a new one not a used one um, the used ones will be full of oil and stuff they'll end up staining your feathers I keep a lot of different tools scissors and stuff like that I have my good scissors that I use just for material they're a brand called anvil and they're curved I really like these scissors I got them I think at Michaels was the only place I could find them the craft store Michaels I have another pair that's my old pair and I used to make fun of my mom for using her good scissors and her getting mad at me, but I learned real quick why. And these scissors here have got notches in them from cutting crap I shouldn't be. So I've marked them to where I have a pair of scissors that I cut monofilament, wire, tinsel, stuff like that. And these I only cut soft fiber stuff. Um, I have my bobbins. I took boards and drilled holes in them to where every one of my bobbins can stick in a place and have a place to go. I did the same type of deal with tools. Um, I have bought dubbing wax in a tube this is actually dubbing wax but i've also bought beeswax chapstick and i actually like it better it works really well um i use a lot of that when i'm doing certain kinds of dubbing but some stuff i don't i keep a big spool of heavy monofilament line so when i want to make weedless 
um, flies, I take that and put it on. Got my flash boo dispenser. Over here is fabric paint, and it's like thick and gooey, almost like fleximent. So if you're making flexible flies or minnow heads, you can take that on and smear it on top with a little brush, and it'll make a, a flexible body. I, I really like that. Um, I keep some fingernail polish remover all the time because head cement and stuff like that's always going to get dried up or locked up in something and that just kind of helps clean up messes. I do a lot of Euro nymph little um, mop flies. So this is actually powder coat paint and what I do is I'll take my jig heads, I'll get them warm with a candle and I'll dip them in that stuff to powder coat them. Over here I have my fly dryer and basically this is a rotary wheel spins one rpm a minute so if you're doing anything with an epoxy or anything that could drip this spins it long enough to where you don't have drip marks on it um i use a lot of different kinds of glues for stuff this is clear cure goo is the brand i like it i've had it for a long time um but it's a uh black light uv glue so you put that on there and you shine the uv light on it and it really really dries up hard and it works wonderful instantly hard um i also use some extreme power accelerator you can get this at most craft stores i get it at hobby lobby it has a little lid that i can put on it this is a new bottle i ran out of the last one and if you're using any kind of super glue you spray that with it and it dries it up instantly when i apply eyes this is the greatest stuff I've found to apply any kind of eyes. If you're gluing eyes down, it, it works really well. Um, this is kind of an assortment of different colors of thread that I use. Um, I got pretty much every color a Sharpie marker to where if I want to add lines here and there. This is all UV paint. I use a lot of fingernail polish, a lot of fingernail polish, but I steal a lot of it from my wife and daughter, so I don't keep it in here. I use theirs whenever I need it. Here's my little dispenser that I keep different wires for ribs and bodies. This is all flash, some wires, stuff like that. Um, one more tool I use quite a bit is a noodle cutter maker thing. It's a kitchen item for making homemade pastas. And it works really well. You can cut foam into strips like this all at once. And that is basically just craft foam. And like these are some little strike indicators that I made out of that stuff. You can get real consistent shapes really, really fast. I like it a lot. Um, I have a lot of foam body work that I do. And you can buy these little things in a pack of 10, 12, you know, and pay a few dollars for them. But I just spent the money and I bought cutters and I have several different ones. Here's some of them that I have of different shapes for grasshoppers and crabs, frogs. And you can basically buy cheap craft foam and smack this thing on them and it'll cut them down really good. Um, wings. I use a lot of flies that have wings and stuff like that. I use several of these little deals. And basically what you do is you'll take your wing material and you'll put these on them. And then just take a lighter and you'll light it and it'll burn around. And then the shape of the wing is inside there so you have pre-cut wings. I have this whole jar is full of them. I make a lot of dubbing myself so I use a little blender or a coffee grinder a coffee grinder works way better because the grinding blades are down lower in the bottom but they both work um, I use this for a lot of different dyeing and blending that I do so I keep that it's kind of handy one thing I like about my my bench is I have these drawers that slide out so I can for videos I actually move it sideways and I set my camera up stuff like that so it works out handy but it gives me extra areas in case I have I keep a notepad I'm old and forgetful so if I see some cool idea or something like that, I try to write it down if I'm doing something or if I need a material or something like that. Um, across here, I have tons of different glues, Flex Cement, Gorilla Glue. Um, one product I really, really like is Zappa, Zappa Gap Glue. It is basically super glue, but I really, really like it. Um, I actually attach my fly line and my leader together with them with a little method. There's a video I have that's out. That, that does that so this is basically my bench on my bench I showed you how I've made a way to clean the bottom I also made a little thing for trash and basically what this is I bought them I don't even remember where but they were a dollar or two and they're trash cans for cars they're little portable trash cans that they're called a collapsible trash can and they just collapse down like that and tie shut and I just zip that, tie that to the bottom of my vise it works really really well um, and then I keep a cup of water 
Um, let me see if I've got feathered in here. I think I do. Whenever you're tying sloppy flies that, you know, sloppy feathers like marabou or something like that, and you're on your vise and you're trying to make it work, if you keep a cup of water around, you can get your fingers wet and you can pull all that material up out of the way. And it, it's really, really handy. I keep toothpicks. I keep a little jar of toothpicks. And this is like a scooter stick. And I have in that same deal as different size nails. So if I'm applying eyes onto something, you can dip that in the paint and then just blotch it and then do one in a different size for a pupil, stuff like that. So I keep a lot of flat stick type things. Um, of course, scissors, every kind of shape scissors that you can imagine. I try to keep most of my colors on bobbins so I don't have to restring all that crap all the time. I keep, I have tons of Chanel, different beads, um, floss. I got a pile of hackle up there, just different feathers. Some of that's there because I have nowhere else to put it. And some of it's stuff I use pretty often. So that's kind of basically my desk. I'll move the camera over here in a second and I will show you guys my, my material setup and what we do with all of the materials here. This here is my material setup. Now under my desk, I have several Rubbermaid containers that are full of like yarn, Chanel, um, I use a lot of baby blanket yarn, stuff like that. Different different oddity stuff that buy, I buy in bulk. And I also have a dresser on the other side of the room that's full of several of my uh, hackle. Um, like I have full pheasant capes and stuff like that. Rabbit fur, stuff like that. Things that are bigger. But the stuff that I use pretty often I keep over here. So I have a drawer full of hooks. I, I mean this thing, I can pull it off and show you. I keep pretty much every kind of hook there is. I try to keep a lot of hooks on hand. I live in the middle of nowhere, so I don't have any fly shops anywhere close. So if I want to tie something, I need to have what I have on hand. So I keep a huge selection of materials. I, I have one drawer that's full of nothing but beads. Um, I use a lot of the chain beads, and these aren't weighted. They're not like chains like on a ceiling fan. I actually have some of them too, but I, I lucked out. Some craft store was going out of business, and I bought... I could probably fill two grocery bags completely full of just spools of these, so it works out good. This is all beads, stuff like that. Um, I have a drawer full of bucktail, and like this is one I actually tanned myself, and then I've got you know several several different colors. While I'm in this drawer, I want to kind of give a word of caution. My drawers are cedar, so they keep the bugs out pretty good, and they protect from bugs. I never thought of it, but last year I had a couple knee surgeries. My father passed away. And I went several months without coming in here and time flies. I had a lot going on in life. And during that time, I guess some mice decided to take up residence in one of my drawers. Um, they were gone by the time I got here and started going through things, but they had destroyed, uh, I hard telling how many hundreds or thousands of dollars worth of material. And they really got into my deer hair and a lot of my hackle. So make sure that if you have your stuff set up and there's a way mice can get it, you can see these aren't sealed up. Um, have protection for that we live out in the country we actually live on a homestead where we you know kind of raise a lot of stuff and have a lot of agriculture going on so it's going to be one of those things that happen there's no way to keep it so prepare for that but i keep that in here this is all my smaller hackles the you know the smaller pieces um some of it strung stuff that came in kits just just random hackle i keep a lot of tools and in here i'm going to show you some tools that i i use i'll pick them up and show um, a cat brush. This is your basic pet brush. But when you're cleaning out, like if you're making your own dubbing or if you're really trying to clean out like a long streamer that's made out of craft fur or something like that, you can really, really clean up and, and straighten things out with this. Uh, I keep hot glue guns around. I use a hot glue quite a bit. Like if I'm installing popper heads and stuff like that, I'll glue them on. And I also take and get some different colors of hot glue and I've made salmon egg patterns. Um, bug dispensers. I got stuff for making tube flies. Pretty much everything. I, I mean, just this thing is just random tools that I don't use enough to keep on my bench. This stuff is like it's a drawer of synthetics. It's going to be all my yarns and stuff that basically I don't have carded or I don't really have another place for them. This is the feathers that I use fairly often. I have, like I say, my big drawer full of big capes, but this is the miscellaneous feathers that aren't marabou, aren't hackle, and they're, they're gonna be just the random feathers like bites and, and guinea feathers, um, flanks off of mallards, you know, just stuff like that. 
Then I have a whole drawer full of deer hair. Again, this and my bucktail are two separate parts of the, the fur that we used, but they were another victim of the, the mice. So you want to prepare for that. Um, I keep a lot of wire and flash, not just counting what I have on my table, but I have a, every color of flashaboo that you can imagine. Furs, man, I've got everything from caribou, moose, mongoose, badger, beaver, muskrat, uh, every kind of fur you can imagine. I, I've got pieces of that, and again, in my dresser as well. Um, this is all my salmon egg stuff. So I've got the glow yarn if you're making them out of that. I, I've got some neon colored flosses that we tie some with. And I even have just some of the little pom-pom craft balls that you can glue onto a hook. And, and they make a pretty good salmon egg pattern as well. Um, down here, I've got all my stuff for making tube flies. And then I got my bulk. Um, this is all my extra um, tinsels and, and some of my thread that I keep extra streamer hair I got a drawer full of stuff that like I, I have a lot of yak hair some craft fur most of my craft fur I keep in a Rubbermaid so this is kind of more of my natural stuff because craft fur comes in such big packages that it doesn't fit in these little drawers <clears throat> that stuff doesn't fit very well either this is all my marabou that I use often I buy marabou in, in bulk so I get great big giant bags of it, but my little stuff and all my UV stuff I keep here So I have marabou to tie with all the time Foam this is gonna be all my foam bodies stuff. I've made in bulk um, Back in the day this was really popular. It was furry foam. I haven't used it in years, but I, I keep a lot of that I've got some little brown foam cylinders, which I'm glad I found them. I'm actually gonna do a pattern with them tomorrow I'll throw them out um, this is nothing but rabbit fur um, from zonker strips to capes to actual pelts this is all rabbit fur that is on leather it's not shaved rabbit fur there's no dubbing in there that is just rabbit fur this is my exotic feathers um, like I got a jungle cock cape um, thank god this drawer didn't get ate um, this is some kind of rooster somebody saved for me it had some pretty long long deals um, here's some feathers I picked up from the zoo one time um, Buddy of mine raises parrots and he gave me a bunch of parrot feathers So that's all the more rare stuff Here is all my extra thread That I don't have around my my vice. I use a lot of rope and cording This is all rubber legs um, rubber bands basically any kind of rubbery stuff mainly my leg section and in my body section for some nips This is all my packs of dubbing that are either in bulk bags because when I mix a bunch It'll make a half a gallon at a time So this is my little bags that I haven't gotten dispensers or as leftover stuff or stuff that come in a kit This is hen hackle this is the drawer that got hit the hardest by the mice so I'm really slim on that. I'm going to have to restock up. And this is peacock, ostrich, and emu. And this is the, I don't buy a lot of this stuff because I have friends that raise peacocks. So I actually have a drawer full of peacock feathers. So this is stuff that comes in kits or some ostrich stuff. But I get a lot of peacock stuff given to me. This drawer here is glues and dyes. And like here's head cement that isn't very old and you can see it's it solidifies really really fast this is why I go with no this one's still pretty good but that's why I go with uh, for fingernail polish because it's cheap but you can take this stuff and add some acetone to it it's all acetone based and it will dilute it down I keep super glue I use a lot of super glue and I use a lot of dye um, so I keep dye around in the dye that I keep around, a lot of times I'll dye dubbings and feathers and stuff like that. Um, here's some of them glue sticks that are not where they belong. But these glue sticks takes a little bit of practice. But if you get like a long streamer hook to practice or a piece of wire and just dab with your hot glue gun, you'll learn how to make them balls pretty consistent to where you can make salmon eggs out of them. They work pretty good for that. Up top here is just kind of crap that I don't have anywhere else to go. I've got jigs stuff for fly tying um just extra materials i buy brushes a lot um you can take these brushes 
and I cut them off to make antenna for flies, eyes for crawdads, stuff like that. I do a lot of micro fishing, micro jig fishing, and I don't know what this is. It's some kind of dog toy or kid toy, or I hope that's the kind of toy it is. But anyhow, you can take these little rubbery things and tie them on, and they make the awesome jig, almost like the the little stretchy worm material you buy. Something I use a lot of that I've never heard of anybody else doing it, but it is the silicone water guard or scotch guard. When I take and make dubbing, you can take this stuff and just mist it over your dubbing and it doesn't make it smell, it doesn't doesn't oil it up, it doesn't change the consistency. I mean a very light, light base of it, but it makes the best water resistant dry fly dubbing that you can imagine. So if you're blending yarn or any kind of material that you're making dubbing out of for dry flies only, this stuff is amazing. And it's just Scotch Guard waterproofing. So that's basically all of my crap other than my bulk stuff. And I'd say the most important part that anybody could have for fly tying, it sits right here. And this is basically my library. Um, this is all fly tying books. That's all Fly Tire Magazine. And I got a few videos, but I would encourage it. Um, you can spend all the money in materials. It's a new day and age from when I grew up. Now there's YouTube out there. But a lot of times I like to tie flies when I'm on camping trips or you know when I'm out doing whatever. And I like that paper book. I like to have the paper copy of what I do. So I'd invest in a library. It's enjoyable. It's nice to sit down. And it's an ever-evolving sport. Part of fly tying for me is really really fun and i it's awesome because i tricked my wife and my daughter are both crafty and so i can go to hobby lobby and they're out looking for material doing their stuff and i can go look for the newest neatest looking material to try to to make flies it doesn't have to be just fly shops i'm all about supporting your local fly shop i 100 percent think them guys need to be in business for their expertise and we need to get our money to them but i live literally three and a half hours away from any of them so i do a lot of craft store shopping and you know there's just so much out there that you can see and i'll try to do a little bit of patterns i'm going to start doing a pattern every week of you know natural stuff and then start doing some with all the you know the different crafty stuff as well so this is my setup um it's done me well i've tied for over 35 years i can only imagine the tens of thousands of flies that have come off of this bench so i hope this kind of gives you guys some ideas and it kind of shows you what my setup is so thank you guys for watching and we'll be tying some videos up some soon